done let them bruise in the dough. Oh shit. They done let them bruise in the dough. They done let them bruise in the dough. Uh, uh, they done let them bruise in the dough. We ain't going nowhere. He bruise. He bruise. He bruise. He bruise. He bruise. They done let them bruise in the dough. All right, y'all heard them. Y'all heard them in the chat. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Who's this? Who's this down here? Deacon. Who's this? You a deacon at what? <clears throat> deacon Sakari. De from where? Sakari Israelites. Uh -oh. oh no! You just did <laughs> oh, a camp channel right here. <laughs> but come on, oh, you wanted to share on. something though. Hold on, wait. Hold on. Hold on, Elder. Oh, hold on, um, Elder Wiggins. Let, <laughs> let him. Let him. Let him at least share. Come on. Come on. Well, brother. first and foremost, I gotta give all honor. Praise and glory to Yahweh, and we do so in the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. This is the deacon. Shalom to the panel and shalom to the brothers and sisters in the chat. Um, shalom, D. Shalom, shalom. What's going on, y'all? Uh, a couple things were said. You know, somebody said something about, um, well, I, I tuned in when you were talking about, um, Freedom in Christ, as far as Acts 15 with those Gentiles. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I don't want to presume or assume. So maybe some y'all can enlighten me on um, what you guys are trying to convey uh, at this point with me tuning in, and then then I'll uh, interject or or add my little tidbit to it. All right, Elder, you want to you want to share with him, Elder Wiggins, what you were sharing? Okay. Summarize well, we, it. Just summarize it real. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. What we were what we were talking about because we were talking about was Apostle Paul and Apostle Peter teaching the same gospel, and some were saying that Apostle Paul is teaching something different than what Apostle Peter is teaching. It's just a bu bunch of conjectures against Apostle Paul. So what what we did today, we looked at Acts the fifteenth chapter, and we discovered that in verse one. There were some men who came down into the church of Antioch saying, except they keep the law of cir the, the, uh, circumcision and the law of Moses, they couldn't receive salvation. So what happened was the they went up to Jerusalem about the, the letter about the matter. And the elders at Jerusalem sent a letter back from Jerusalem to Antioch. They also sent some of the leaders uh, from Jerusalem with Paul and Barnabas to the church of Antioch, declaring that. We had not, they had not sent, sent no one from Ju Judea into Antioch saying such things. And what they had wrote to the church of Antioch was that these are the commandments that they, uh, that they should abstain, uh, abstain for, from, which would be foods, idol, sacrifice to idols, blood, drinking blood, strangled uh, foods, and um, idolatry, fornication. Okay, so this is what we discover that Paul brought back to the church in Antioch. Okay. This is what he began to preach. He began to run around the churches with this letter. He began to run around as he began to preach to the Gentiles, showing the letter that this is what came down from Jerusalem. Remember the Bible says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached first in Jerusalem and they're all around the world. So Paul comes back, they come back, they give that letter to the church and they begin to rejoice. What are they rejoicing for? They're saying that we don't have to keep the law and we don't have to keep circumcision to receive salvation. So that's what we were talking about today. Okay. So everybody knows our stance. And if you don't, I'll just let it be known. But I don't want to uh, deviate from the topic at hand. We believe that any Gentiles receiving salvation are actually Israelite foreigners, as we were called Gentiles. But that's another topic of discussion. So I'll just entertain it from your perspective. Um, we know that the law of Israel is a moral law, um, but it's also our legislation. So if we're in our land, uh, so my first question is before I go into Acts 15 is when we're in our land, <clears throat> um, are you saying that Gentiles don't have to keep our laws? That's our legislation, uh, even outside of the moral compass of it. What difference does it make if it's in the land or out of the land? Do Gen did you know you think Gen it's a difference if the Gentiles have to keep it or not? If it's if it's in the land of captivity or not? Well, there's two there's two perspectives of that because one you could be following 
if you want to follow our God, then you got to follow the laws of our God. If you're in our land, then you are subjected to the laws of our land, which why the which is why the little Israelitish boy got his ass, excuse me, got put to death for picking up sticks on the Sabbath. This proves that while they're joined among us, they have to keep our laws. Where that's at in the Bible. Okay, gotcha. Five, boy. Can I ask him a question next dealing with the millennial reign? Uh -huh. Hold on, hold on about that millennial reign because we want to, because we already got a problem with, we say, because, and like I said, we've always said this was a non camp channel because our doctrines are different. Okay. A lot of our doctrines are different. Mm -hmm. but when it comes to the, when it comes to the Gentiles, because, because what he's saying is they have to, Gentiles have to keep the laws. We have to see, Pastor Johnson, we have to see if this is what Peter, James, and John communicated from Acts 15 on. Okay. This is what Numbers, Peter communicated. That's what we want to see. Okay, in Numbers chapter 15. In uh, Numbers. Yeah, Numbers chapter 15. I know Christians don't like thus saith Yahweh, but we love what Yahweh says. Every time he talking, when Paul talk, it's thus saith the Lord. When Peter and them at the council in Acts 15, oh, wait, it's thus saith the Lord. Wait, wait, how is that when Paul said in First uh, uh, Second Corinthians 2 and 8, this is I speaking, not the Lord. Was he lying? About, about, about what? But when he's given it, when he's given, he's given his his Holy Ghost wisdom on divorce, on, on singleness and, and ministry. You know what I'm saying? Second Corinthians eight and eight. He said, "I speak not the Lord." I said, and I just said when he's given his Holy Ghost wisdom on ministry, singles, divorce, and all of that stuff. Read fifteen. Read the. And, 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 and evidently, 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 evidently. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go okay. ahead, brother. Go ahead. Numbers 15. He asked me to 15 bring it or 13. Up. Let me write that. All right, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Numbers 15 and 32. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath. And they found them gathering sticks, brought them unto the Moses, and they put it in the water, and they decided. And the Lord said to Moses, congregation, and the congregation was told to Moses. Hold on, hold on. 32? Hold on. No, Numbers 15. One second. 32. Hey, go ahead, Wiggins. Why 30, look at that? Go ahead, with Ella Wiggins. Go ahead. 32, 32 to 36, oh. I believe. So that's a, a, a another premise, or it'll I mean, I just, in Acts chapter 15, where it says he gave them. In verse 20, when it says they abstain from pollutions and idols, from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. So are any of these laws that were prescribed to these Gentiles a mosaic law? Yes, you know, the law he used. They, they pulled from as a guideline. Yes, things strangled. That was some things that Israelites didn't do. They used that as a guideline. Yes, that's correct. Did okay. they go back to Antioch? Did they go back to Antioch? preaching and teaching the laws of Moses, brother. Okay, so let's 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 read the very next verse and I want you guys to explain this to me. So verse 20 says, You're but that we, Acts now, right? Yeah, Acts 15 and 20, but that we write unto them oh, that Lord. they abstain from pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. Very next verse is key. For Moses of old time had in every city that preach him being read in the synagogue Every Sabbath day. Why would he say? Why would they say that? What verse you just read? Let me pull it up on one. Everybody. Acts fifteen and twenty-one. Acts fifteen and twenty-one. <laughs> Excuse me. Right, I'm gonna mute you right now. All right, I'm gonna mute you right now. All right. All right. All right. Um, you see it, right? I don't know where we at. All right, where you where you at? Where did you stop, Elder? Where did you stop? Uh, I'm not sure what point he's trying to prove to be truthfully honest. I'm listening to what he's trying to say. Uh, even though even though he's trying to talk about Paul, what Paul taught is clear that he said that God is going to judge every man according to his gospel. So we can talk about Paul all we want to, but if we're going to believe in the scriptures, we better believe that our gospel that we preach should line up with Apostle Paul. Now, I'm not sure what he's trying to prove here in Acts, the 15th chapter. Hold on but, a minute. Hold on a minute. I mean, go ahead. Go ahead. You can hear him, right? You can, he can hear you. I just got him muted. Go ahead. He can hear you. I, I'm not really uh, sure when he's talking about the, the, the um, 
I guess the word being read in the synagogues every day, that's not going to change this letter. And what was taught letter. when it went back? All right, hold on. I don't want to go too further. All right, brother, come on, because I don't want to just to delay the conversation that we're having, but there's a point that you wanted to bring out. You said you, you think you can prove from this verse, or there's some way you're trying to go to prove that they were um they went back and they continued to teach. Or they started after this conflict, they started to teach in Antioch the laws of Moses, Deacon. <clears throat> Am I permitted to speak? Yeah, I guess I'm yeah, yeah, I'm muted. Okay, so when you read Acts 15 and 21, this is something, or starting at verse 20, this is something that these Gentiles were heavily delving into. And okay. so they prescribed them these particular laws of Moses, first and foremost. But the very next verse is so imperative to the pericope because it says to a dead please 20 where you at now go ahead i got it on screen i want everybody to see where you're going verse 21 for moses of old time has in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogue every sabbath so they're saying let's not put stress them that they have to immediately keep the whole law this is what we do um when we evangelize our brothers and sisters and give them their nationality or heritage we don't just say, hey, look, you was a whole nigga yesterday, but now uh -huh. you got to keep all 613. We tell them, you know, stay away from the pagan pagan holidays, um, stay away from fornication, things like that. In the very next verse, it says, because in Moses, they're going to go to the synagogue every Sabbath, these same Gentiles, whoever they may be, and they're going to hear Moses being taught every Sabbath. They'll get the rest of the law. Hey, yo, Brown, where the plumber at right now? All right, go ahead. So, but you let me ask you a question. You keep the 613, not the not you today keep the 613, not the Gentiles that you no, teach. That, no, that's not that's not the question. The question is, is Acts chapter 15. So let me deal with the historical and biblical narrative. So you guys said that Paul wasn't teaching this. So can I address that now? You can address that they went back. You're gonna address the part that they went back to Antioch and they taught that. Yeah, I'm because gonna, you gotta stay with the letter. As it relates to why they went up to Antioch, because as long as you're in the context, we as long as you're in the context, I'm listening to you. Okay, so so it's a time. It's a it's as time progressed. Of course, they would learn the rest of the law because if you're telling me this is all they had to keep, where's the greatest commandment of loving your brother? Where is where's the greatest commandment of loving your loving the most high? Some Christians say this, and I, I don't want to superimpose this on you guys. Some Christians say that all the Gentiles have to keep is Acts 15 and 20. Well, what about I never, the I don't know. I've been in Christianity for a minute. I never heard that. Never heard it. I never I, heard I, that. I, 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 heard them, I, I heard them preaching the laws of Christ. I yeah. heard them preaching stuff like that. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And, and Galatians 5. Yeah. Okay, got yeah. you. Got you. Got you. So, that. so that means that they don't have to keep just these laws in Acts chapter 15, verse 20, right? Absolutely. No, in, in that sense, you're correct. Yeah, you, you, you got to keep what, what Christ said, <laughs> as far as what we would call like the laws of Christ. And the laws of Christ. all the laws and the prophets. But go ahead. No, I want to hear your from 20, from 22. How can we trace an Acts that they went back and they were like, all right, we do have to teach this. Yeah. So first of all, like you guys said earlier, that um, Paul is going to these other churches. So being that Paul is the main one going to these other people outside of Jerusalem, I'd like to show you where he was teaching the Mosaic law, if I may. Go ahead. You ain't say no verse or nothing yet. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I just want to respect your platform. No, no, no. We want, I want to make, yeah, I, I want to hear it. So uh, he said it has to line up with the, somebody said, forgive me if I said his name wrong, Elder, uh, Elder Wiggins. Elder, Elder Wiggins. Wiggins. Yeah, I got to line up with the doctrine. I'm going to close the screen for a minute so I could. All right. Keep going. Okay, bro. yeah. In Acts chapter 21, because he was speaking about um, uh, it has to line up with the apostles. Uh, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. He said the doctrine has to line up with the apostles or the doctrine has to line up with, with only Paul's, Paul's letters. No, 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 no. What, 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 from, from the from the epistle from in 15, a letter was sent back with other Israelites <clears throat> to Antioch mm -hmm. to those brothers. Mm -hmm. And it was special emphasis on uh circumcision. So why did Paul circumcise Timothy? 
No, that's court. not. No, that's not how. On the way back to Drew. No, no, that's not how we really do that. I want to. I want no. I want to keep. Hit, I want to hear your argument. Go ahead. I mean, Mike, I'm, you, I, say, but Mike you gotta pull up the scripture because you know I'm in the comment section. You know I'm in the comment section. Just pull up the scripture. Go ahead, brother. You got the floor. Yeah. Well, that's a question. I think that kind of puts more credence to Acts 15 and 21, where it's saying that they are going to learn more uh mosaic law structure codification on every sabbath day in the synagogue and as we progress six chapters later uh -huh. you guys say that um animal sacrifice is a part of the mosaic law or the law of christ acts 15 and 24 hold on a minute mm -hmm. for as much as we heard all right yeah yeah I hold on a minute Go, um yeah yeah hold on hold on a minute all right, you see, you can see the screen. Hold on a second. I'm well, sorry. Let me, just, let me just do this. Let me just do this, Deegan. Somebody, somebody, thank you. I appreciate that in the super chat. Somebody just asked for you to, you stopped right here just to go down a few more verses. Um, 24. How do you understand this right here that I have highlighted? Yeah, perfect, perfect. Because it says, um, for as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have trouble with words subverting your soul, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. That wasn't the first commandment they gave them. That wasn't part of what we call the starter pack or the starter kit that they gave these particular Gentiles in Acts 15. But again, preceding verse, going back to, <clears throat> excuse me, um, verse 21, they would still learn the Mosaic law um, every Saturday, or I'm sorry, it's <laughs> Saturday, every Sabbath in the you know, synagogue. Right, we understand Sabbath day for Moses, but that's what I'm saying. It seems like you're imposing something on the text because the plain reading is we gave nobody no such command to do that. We didn't yeah. send them down to there troubling your souls. If we go back up, Peter talking, Peter, original Israelite, Peter says that why put a burden on them that we or our fathers could not bear? Mm -hmm. Where did Yahshua pour out the spirit on Cornelius when Cornelius wasn't full blown, keeping all the law, statutes, and commandments? They said he was a God fearer, but why did why did the spirit come on him? And 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 there's a good chance that his diet might not have been that of an Israelite diet. That's the question. How can we go from the letter and prove that, and then later on from the rest of the epistles that Gentiles were receiving the laws of Moses as instructions? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it seems like you're just reading into the 21st verse. Oh, well, perfect, perfect. Well, I would love for you to to uh, give a viable antithesis for what verse 21 means. Yeah. I, what, 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 I got him. I got him. Hold yeah. on, what fancy word they use? <laughs> oh no, that's not. He didn't debate Garfield. This is this is this. No, this is. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, this is Sakari, but this is not. I think you're talking specifically this is about not gorilla, gorilla Hebrew. Hebrew. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's not gorilla Hebrew. It's not gorilla I'm sorry. Hebrew. Yeah, oh, it's all good. It's all good. I would love to it. Screen, but yeah, but you still in the same arena. That is that's his people, though. That's his people, sis. Yeah, Gorilla uh, Hebrew is my my ace boon coon. But yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, they run together. Yes, yes. Go ahead. To, uh exegete verse 21. And then I'd like to please get into some examples of where it is a mandate if the Gentiles, I would like to bring up some what we call proof tech or supporting scripture. But all right, all right, hold on. So your main thing is that your main thing is that the Gentiles did; they were taught the laws of Moses and they followed the laws of Moses. This that's your whole main thing, right? With this fifteenth chapter, right? Well, let me just give a declarative statement. Um, Gentiles can play in traffic for all I care, but if they come to join the God of Israel, then they are going to be subjugated to our legislation. Right. OK. And that was not only in the Old Testament, in the New Covenant after Yeshua also. Right. Yeah. And I can show you eschatology where it's going to prove this point as well, meaning the, the apostles or the prophets uh -huh. looking past the incarnation 2000 years ago into the kingdom and uh -huh. seeing the whole world keeping Mosaic law. The whole world, huh? Okay, all right, all right, Mike. Pull up what verse you want to um. Do you want to read the letter? You're very familiar with the letter, right? Because with everything is built I, off of the letter that went back from James, John, Peter, and everybody. You believe that uh, the foundation of the instructions for the Gentiles were in the fifteenth chapter with the letter, correct? Hey, Brian, uh -huh. I'm about to. I'm sorry. 
I got I got I got to bounce real quick because I got to close up my day at work. I was going to make a quick point. Come what on. I'm going to do is I'm going to close my day up. I, no, I'm going to come back. Let me finish up with something because I was going to make a real quick one. But y'all got deeper. So I'm a, I'll be back. But just give me about 45 minutes. All right. And, don't nobody, all right. And, and being that the conversation went this way, please don't nobody send me no hate mail about no camp coming up on here. But go ahead. Um, <laughs> You do it, and I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Deacon. You do agree that the 15, you know what I'm saying? The 15th, the, bring up the letter, Mike. Bring up the letter. Which letter? Which term of Acts 15? Yeah. Right. But all right. You mind if I want to share one passage first and then I go to Acts 15? Good, good. Real go quick. ahead, go ahead. Me, I got to pull my headphones off for one second. All right. Here we go. Now you could change your what's screen. Up? What's, one what's up, Deke? How you doing? <laughs> Minister Mike, what's going on? Oh, How you familiar? With? Okay. All right. Oh, you familiar? Yeah. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, Mike, keep Mike Deacon good. Huh? Oh, Deacon oh, good. Oh, oh, D cool. D cool. Now, all right, you know, all right, he, all right. He, he, he'll be he respectful. All right, that's all right. All right. <laughs> we got some questions from Mike. Oh, praise oh God. yeah, bring it. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Y'all ain't finna come on here and talk to Rosa Mike now. He kicked me off. I was just talking no. one time on Facebook, but he kicked me off. We back friends again now, though, but we good now. <laughs> You my guy, I'm, I'm, I'm you my guy. For a second. But, but but first, I I just want to let's let's clarify Paul's writings first because, uh, you know, it was it was imposed that Paul is speaking his opinions. Um, let's be clear here. In First Corinthians chapter number fourteen, verse thirty-seven, it says, "If anyone thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things which I write." Right. Well, what did he write? His, his letters, the things which I write to you are the commandments of the Lord. So let's be clear. Paul is not writing of his own opinion. That's a misunderstanding of where he went to first Corinthians chapter number seven, where Paul is addressing, as Berean said, marriage and divorce. No, Paul understood his apostolic authority and that the things that he write at had authority from the Lord. He was writing the commandments of the Lord. What? The things which I write. So anybody who doesn't take Paul's writings as the commandments of the Lord are misunderstanding the the, the New Testament. All right, now I'll jump back over to... Uh, Wait, hold uh, on. I, before before you go to Acts 15 now, that because that was a whole different topic. I would like to... What, just, well, you, hit, you, you said it, and I just thought I'd clear that up because we're going to be reading some Paul and I don't want people read thinking they read in opinions. Okay. So you said everything he writes is a commandment. Then why did he, why does he write in numerous places, a plethora, a plethora of places where things that he's writing are not commandments? No, but you're wrong though. There's one, there, there's a particular place where he says not, not, not the Lord, but I, what Paul, and again, this is why understanding the language is important. Paul is saying that what he's establishing it has not been established in the past. In other words, there was no commandment on the matter in the past. That's why he says, I, not the Lord. He's referring to that which had been established in the past versus what he's establishing as an apostle to the church. So, no, we can't look at Paul's letters and say, well, OK, well, that was Paul's opinion. You know, we don't have to really do what he say. No, what Paul is saying, we got to understand their idioms, their cultural language. Paul is saying, I'm establishing something here that was was not previously established in the past. Okay. That's what, that's what, what, what about like the law of Moses? Was yeah. that, that law, law, mm -hmm. The Go law ahead. of Moses, right, right. That's what that's I'm saying. Right. In the cases where Paul uses that term in those, you, he's saying that those things were not something that had been established in the past. Okay, right? Brother Mike, Brother but Mike. Now, we, now, we, we, I'm, no, I'm sorry, Brother Mike, but I meant that I think oh, y'all, the on. main thing that y'all are establishing here, if I'm correct, I walked away for a minute, the main thing that y'all are establishing is that from the letter, from okay, the yeah. apostles, Let's get back from on. the I'll first let it go. apostolic council that, the, that they were instructed later on to teach the Gentiles the customs right. of Moses. Yes, yes, so, yes, so, yes. So, you indeed. All right, that's where first we, all right. Mike, so I'll ask... give you the floor. I'll give you the floor, Mike. I just want to. I just want to get get this clear before I conclude or for, before I concede. You're saying that Paul has the authority to add to the Mosaic Law. Okay. First of all, we're not under the Mosaic Law, so whatever Ooh. Paul so-called is adding, 
he's not adding it to the Mosaic law because what law is he adding to? And let's not and, and another he, thing. He I'm sorry too. Hold on. And we know we want to do it with just Paul. We want to do it because some folks say Paul doing his own thing. We want to do a Paul, Peter, James, John. That's like I said. We got to do it from the council when Absolutely. all of the apostles and all the Israelites are together. Nobody going to separate Paul. With this whole doctrine came down, and they were all on one accord. Barnabas, everybody was on one accord. We got to ride with everybody. And, and, and Pastor See, Brian, can, can, can I say this one thing right behind Elder Mike? Because I was trying to get a point out, but I didn't. But it's kind of like what uh, Apostle Paul is doing. It's kind of like what Moses had did in Matthew nineteen and eight, and uh, Matthew nineteen and eight. Because Moses said, Jesus said, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. Okay, so Paul is making a move like Moses did. I mean, you may not yeah. receive, but that's kind of how Paul is, as he's saying when when he's giving this command, talking yeah, about giving his how, opinion as a ruler. Okay, all right, I got yeah, you. like like that's like Apostle Paul, like you want to say. I, well, just want to, I just want to just just get this clear so we can move back right, on to right, these Gentiles. You, you guys are saying that there's the law of Moses, the law of Christ, and the law of Paul. Okay, got it. No, no, no. I didn't you see say how that. they switched you. Hold on, you see how hold on let me. Mercy, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. The law. We are not. Hold on. So now, okay, hold on. Let me let me, let's jump back a chapter real quick or two, right quick to Acts chapter number thirteen, right, and let's just be clear here what the distinction because this is important the 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 hold up is people can't get away from the mount when we're trying to take them to the cross of christ acts 13 39 well let me just read it 38 that's, therefore that's therefore let it be known to you brethren that through this man talking about yeah. jesus or yeshua is preached to you the forgiveness of sin through who through jesus is preached to you forgiveness of sins and by him Everyone who believes is justified from all things from which, check this out, you could not be justified by the law. See, if we understood the law in Deuteronomy chapter number 18, and I think Elder Wiggins quoted this earlier, Moses told Israel, his congregation, that when he comes, this prophet that the Lord was going to raise up from among you, hear him. So, so Paul is simply echoing Christ because he's a apostle of Christ. It's not that Paul is adding anything. Paul is articulating that which the Holy Spirit is giving him through his apostleship being one called back Christ. So that has to be clear. So Paul's words are authoritative. And to try to denounce that is to denounce scripture. All right. Yeah. I got to pull up my screen now. No. I got to pull up my screen now. You want me to go back to Acts 15? Now? You want me to go back to No, no, I okay, I got look, you. I'm I just want to look. I'm, I'm one deacon. I'm one deacon to see this from the top. And I just want to. Oh, just from the top. This from the top. All right, from the top. Plus, everybody. It was. It was it, Paul ain't out here doing his own thing. We got to make sure we establish that. Christians ain't confused trying to ride out with Paul like Paul saying something different from Peter, James, and John. Right. Somebody here teaching something different. We all got to bear witness. Christianity teaches something different. Some of these Christian Israelites out here teaching something different. Some of these camps, somebody is teaching something different from what the original. So when we all compare, we're going to see who is teaching the message or understanding the message closer to Peter, James, and John, who seem to be pillars in the church. We're going to see who's closest to that message. Come brother, on, you can take it from the top. Brother, brother Moran, this is Elder Joe. Yeah, Ella Joe. Um, Ella Mike, you're gonna read from 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 verse number uh, one, but I also want the uh, the ones on the panel to understand something that is going on here uh, in Acts chapter <clears throat> number uh, fifteen that the Holy Spirit is present. Of course, Ooh. Amen. I agree with that's, that. Ooh, that's something. That. That need to be understood. James ain't lied. James that said the Holy good to the Spirit and to us. That, that's, and, right. that's, that's what I'm going to in verse number 28. Come on. It says, and it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay on you no greater burden than these necessary things. So, so whatever reading, jump off on this chapter is yeah. from the Most High God, just like we at the mountain, just like we at the burning bush. This is the words of the Spirit of the Lord that's coming down to all that would believe. It's the Holy Spirit revealing it. Come on. So, so we got to keep that in, in, in mind at this council. The Holy Spirit is there present 
and he's revealing unto them what what um bishop james is going to give the final conclusion on so don't forget that part come on all right come on you work now which you want me to get this from the top mine you want deacon yeah. you want deacon to read it from the top how you want to do whatever you want to do well, yeah, Either way, I, I, I was going to hit that 21 but if you want to start from the top that's cool can I, can I, real quick because i have a whole live stream that i have to do here uh on a oh you are oh, you give a jump on your channel or another channel yeah, so I, I wanted to. All right, just, well, go ahead. You got the floor, then go ahead and talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can, I just, you know, can I just make a few points? And, go ahead, uh, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Yeah, because I don't, I don't want to get this long and drawn out. Let me just state my my premise, and then you guys can rebut that for your audience. I just want to make it fully clear of our understanding. Um, when we look at, uh, let's just jump to. I got a question for for Mike. Mike and 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 the brother. No, not even Mike. Just lay out your whole. Just lay your whole joint. Out what, you know where you at with this? What happened? Just gotcha, explain gotcha. to the whole audience what this means. Got you. Got you. Got you. So again, as I stated um, some time ago, Acts fifteen, they are um, they're getting these laws because that's what they are heavily delved off into. Um, mm -hmm. They would eventually, in due time, pick up the rest of the law because they were cut off from it. And uh, again, we believe those are Israelite foreigners. You guys believe those are non-Israelites. That's a whole mm -hmm. other topic right now. Mm -hmm. And what we could see in the Apostle Paul's writings is him teaching law to the churches that he's writing to. He's teaching Mosaic law to these churches. Um, he took Timothy to get circumcised. And this was before Titus. This was before Titus. Uh, and then when we look at the uh, eschatological scriptures, which now you uh, know there's a difference between um prescriptive for what we descriptive what we see what happened he took timothy to get circumcised and what he taught out of his own mouth and he told people to do what what the bible describes happened in acts and what we're told to do in acts we de it described that noah built the ark but everybody ain't told to build the ark so you describe you understand that description and prescriptive stuff what's prescriptive for us to do did paul tell us all to be circumcised in the flesh paul said circumcision verily profiteth okay isn't verily profited i heard that okay right so that's romans chapter two that is romans chapter two uh <laughs> verse <laughs> hold on mike leave him alone let him go ahead romans chapter two verse 25 for circumcision okay. verily profiteth so when we look at uh let's look at romans chapter two uh, verse 23, thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law, dishonoreth thou God. Mike, what law is this in verse 23? Oh, you, see, you said Romans 2, 23? Yeah. Well, what well, that law, he's he's clearly referring back. Hold on. Let me go. Let me go to it since he put my screen on. Hold on. Romans 2, 23, you said? Yeah. All right. All right. He's clearly you got to understand context. Right. So Paul is referring to Jews who had been given the law. Right. Because he's going to go on to talk about Gentiles who have not the law. So so in this text, he's condemning the Jews, actually, because they make their boast in the law. And it's <coughs> talking about the Mosaic law, the law okay. given on Mount Sinai. Okay, so it's Mosaic law. That's all. I mean, just yeah, but I make mean, you know, I got okay. the Verse 24. Verse 25, for circumcision verily profited if thou keep the law. Same Mosaic law, right? Hold on for a second. Yeah, yeah, but but yeah, hold too. on. But here was here was Paul's point, though. I can't let you just run past that. <laughs> circumcision verily profited if thou keep the law. The question is this. Are, is anybody keeping all the law? And the answer is absolutely no. Well, the Bible says you know, that. That's why I asked, let him and let, that's why I asked him if he can when he mentioned six. But Minister years. Mike, Minister Mike, you can't just say nobody. The Bible says John the Baptist's parents kept all the law, statutes, and commandments. So you can't just say that. So no, look no, at no. what it says: for circumcision verily profitive if thou keep what the law. Here? Now listen, Mike. Whether you say, let me just entertain your argument, right? Let's say nobody can keep the law, but is Paul saying? Circumcision profited if you keep the law. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, okay. he is saying that. Okay, so I'm going to help you with this. Let me finish my premise. Go, but go ahead. Break the go law, ahead. Circumcision is made uncircumcision. So breaking the law makes you uncircumcised in the flesh or uncircumcised what? 
in the heart. In other words, your circumcision, circumcision, he's really taking the emphasis off physical circumcision and making it about the heart. Okay, perfect. Now watch this. Therefore, if the uncircumcision, who's that? It's Gentiles. Keep the righteousness of the law, which is the mo same Mosaic law he's talking about, right? No, there's a difference here because oh. bro, wait a minute. Hold on, hold, on, hold on, Mike. You just said every time it says law is the Mosaic law until no, it gets right no, here. No, 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 I did not say every time. I say it in that verse. Now, remember, the righteous require. <laughs> listen, no, because this is important to understand. The righteous requirements, Christians fulfill the righteous require. There's a difference from the righteous requirements versus the cardinal ordinances. So let's not get it twisted. And circumcision, which is included in the law. So it, it, would, it would seem Paul is contradicting himself because how can an uncircumcised person keep the righteous requirement of the law when the law says you have to be uncircumcised paul is excluding the cardinal ordinance of i think you missed it. Right i don't want you to throw him off mike i want him to finish up on the 15th chapter and how i just if he could in a few more minutes can you prove that that paul and the apostles told the gentiles to keep the laws and yeah, so, so this is anyway. This is you my, got the floor, brother. Nobody go. No, you got the floor. Go ahead. Yeah, this is my premise. I'm laying down. So as I I broke down Acts chapter 15 and 20 and 21, I address verse 24. And no, you ain't whole, break it down. You ain't break it down. You ain't break it down. Now break it down. I told you my whole premise is that they got these laws first because they were heavily in delved into these matters and so they had to give prescribe them this what we call a starter pack after that it says verse 21 they're going to learn the mosaic law every sabbath so they can didn't I, initially can I respond to the so they had a starter pack back then oh, starter pack. Let, me, let, me, let me respond to the so starter pack Maria. so called starter pack that's what i let said me, now, let me respond okay. to the starter pack you, just, you guys just asked me <laughs> you know i asked you mike jumping in mike open I didn't, know had, I didn't know that y'all had to go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Can Mike. I respond to the, I'm sorry, Bree. Yeah. Let me respond to the starter pack. Listen, y'all, you all Michael explained the starter pack later on. I didn't even know they had a starter pack. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so Plum, much. Listen, thank plumber so been much. The, the plumber been preaching the starter pack for weeks. And what proves this but he ain't calling the year. You're right, you're right. But what That's proves what I said this, the go ahead. What proves this is when we read Isaiah 66 and when we look into the kingdom. He's saying that the stranger has to keep hold of the Sabbath, have to take hold of the Sabbath, yes. take hold of the covenant. When we look at Zechariah 14, it says the Gentiles will be keeping the Feast of Tabernacles. And if they don't come up from their land to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, they're not going to have any rain. When we look at Isaiah 66, it says from one new moon to another new moon, from one Sabbath to another Sabbath shall all flesh come and worship me. So we see even in the kingdom of heaven, Gentiles having to be subjugated to God's holy law. Now, so, the only good said, Deacon, I'm riding with you on that. The only thing is I want to see Peter, James, John, and Paul doing teaching what you're teaching, not in the millennial reign, but preparing people hearts for it even in the first, second, third. Okay, all, thank all, you. All the way thank on. you. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. Acts chapter 21. Acts chapter 21, Paul gets rebuked. I hate Mike. I hate Mike. He's Acts a, chapter 21. Paul got, Paul got rebuked for not keeping, for, for, go ahead. You got the floor. No, he got rebuked because he was teaching against the law of circumcision. Watch Stop this. It. Watch James, the Lord's brother here. And I would love for Mike to respond to this so I can make a whole video. on my, Mike, you know you went viral on my channel, right? Hey, man, I've been the viral verse channel. 19. Acts yeah. 21, verse 19. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 when they heard it, hey, they glorified the Lord. Hold on, let him pull it up. Where's it? All right. Acts that's chapter it? 21, verse 20. So when they heard the he, said, he wants to see James no, Paul. And then let me respond to him though. Right? Okay, go ahead. Now, Acts chapter 21. Acts chapter 21. He said he wants to see James, Peter, and, and Paul and all these guys teaching. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, so Acts chapter 21, verse 20. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe they are zealous of the law. Now, I don't... Okay, let me just keep going. <laughs> verse 21. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles 
What that, that don't mean? What that mean? Oh, that don't mean nothing right there. Let me, let me, let me, let me just, let me just finish. <laughs> I got him. Let me just no, 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 let him keep. I'm on here. Let him keep reading. Let me Go just ahead. finish. Among the Gentiles to forsake Moses. So James is like, Brody, you're going among the. There's a, we're hearing that you're going among these Gentiles teaching to forsake Moses, saying they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. Look what James says. Power check them like, Je like Jesus' real blood brother would. What is it therefore? The multitude must need come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Do therefore this what we say thee. We have four men which have a vow on them. Them take, purify themselves with thee. This is the Levitical process here. And be at charges with them that they may shave their heads and all may know that those things wherefore they are were informed concerning thee are nothing, but thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. So he's saying, you know, we've been hearing you've been going amongst these Jews who are amongst the Gentiles saying they don't got to get circumcised, saying they don't have to walk after the manner of Moses. You know, go make this animal sacrifice with the rest of these brothers, pay for it. And show everybody that you walk orders orderly and keep us the law. So, my dear beloved brother Berean TV, I'm I'm not sure what your name is. I'll just call you brother Berean. Yes, you yes. asked me to show you James teaching that. I got one more supportive scripture for James. This is James four and eleven. This is James chapter four verse eleven. And let me just give an example of of each apostle teaching the, the Mosaic law, and then I'll let I'll yield the floor. I'll listen to Mike's rebuttal, and then. Uh, I'll give you guys a good day. James 4 and 11. I'm going to read this uh, in a couple different translations because the old English makes it kind of hard to understand, but I'm going to just read both. James 4 and 11. Speak not evil, oh, oh, speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. Look what he's saying. He's saying, I'm going to read the NLT. Don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. But your job is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. So that's an example. And I'm going to give it to you, Mike. I promise. That's an example of James. Now, I want to give an example. Of, well, I already went to Romans 2. I went to Romans 2. Uh, Paul clearly says that this law, which Brother Mike tried to say was different from the very verse before it says that if you keep the righteous set of the law it actually circumcises your heart how do we know this because god himself who a lot of people put men over god himself god said that keeping the mosaic law would circumcise your heart in deuteronomy chapter 10. so i gave an example with james i gave an example with paul and i want to give another example with peter i want to i know you guys are familiar with this so for time's sake i'll just reference it uh did not Paul get mad at James, I'm sorry, Peter, because Paul was saying Peter was forcing the laws on the Gentiles in Galatians chapter two. Would you guys agree with that? Yes or no? Say that, say that Paul was doing what? Paul was, was a bit <laughs> upset at, at Peter because he said Peter was forcing the law of Moses on the Gentiles in Galatians chapter two. No, I don't agree with that. Okay. So let's get that real quick. No, no, you ain't got to pull it up. That I could, that ain't gonna make me agree with it. That Paul, that I, I agree that something happened concerning the law and Gentiles and behavior and all of that. But for the sake of time, okay. So that, that that's literally what it says. Uh, anybody can go fact check that. And then I want to get this last one. Um, is a question for Brother Mike because this is something I've been wanting to ask him for a long time now since he declined to. Uh, come on one of the biggest Hebrew Israelite platforms to ever exist. Brother yeah. Mike, would you would you say that, would, would anybody say this? Anybody say this? So I want you guys to address the what I presented as far as them keeping the holy days in the kingdom of heaven and a few examples I presented with the apostles. But would you guys say that Israelites, ethnic Israelites, whoever they are, do they have to keep the commandments in order to be delivered from the curses and their exile and then brought back to the land as it per pertains to an actual prophecy? Where dispensational Tim at? Uh, I could briefly answer that, yes. Okay, all praises. 
Well, that, well, well, when I read the scriptures, I don't see that narrative yeah. at all. I'm trying to wait on him to finish, and I'm just going. Okay. No, no, let him get. Okay. Let him get the last point. I want him to get this, my last, this is my last point. Yeah, I want to let them. Don't nobody say nothing. Let him get. Let, let him get. Brother Mike, run. brother Mike, I hope you're. I hope you're. Um, um, because I'm very. I'm. I'm really looking forward to your rebuttal, and I know we don't have time. I know you be busy. I literally got to hop on the live. I haven't even ate today, but it's all good. I might as well fast. Um, <laughs> Mike, what I specifically what I would like for you to address is Isaiah 56 where the, the strangers are taking a hold of the covenant, having to keep the law. Isaiah 6, gotcha. the new moon, the new moon, the Sabbath, the Sabbath, Zechariah 14, they got to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, the account of what happened in Acts 21. Um, We're slick at. James 4 and 11. And then Brother Mike also went on his channel and said that you can't keep the laws outside the land. So I would really, really please, and I'll cash up you if you do this, Mike. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse one to seven please i beg of you just exegete th that pericope for me all right <laughs> you, so, you got them three you put right, a you lot out there but let me just address you put a lot out there so oh, give brave, me a second brother. i know right, thank you brother. thank you brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you want him to hold on yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Listen, listen yeah, I got a couple more. Listen, Mike, you better ask your hardest questions because I have to go. I don't have no questions. I'm just gonna straighten oh, out no. the stuff you said. Okay, go but ahead. let me straighten out what you said, and then me and you, we're gonna have to get in the ring again. I'm gonna have to, you know, we can deal with all of that. So, but let me let's be let's let's can we deal with the starter pack, right? <laughs> first, because that was his first claim, right? The starter pack. There is nothing. In Acts chapter 15, which is what we've been telling the plumber who've been who've been preaching the starter pack doctrine for a long time. Right. I love there. The there is nothing in this verse that says they will learn. <laughs> There's nothing in here. It is a complete conflation of the text. Now, they were given these things. And then they said, for Moses has throughout many generations, those who preach him in every city being read in the synagogue every Sabbath. There were Gentiles who were who were Sabbath keepers and, and synagogue attenders. And so James, just like he did in Acts chapter number 21, he gave commands for Gentiles to keep so they can there would be a, a maintenance of order. Remember this. Who did Paul debate with in all throughout the book of the Acts? the leaders of the synagogues. Are you trying to tell me that they wanted the believers to go to the synagogues and learn when most of these synagogues and the leaders of the synagogues rejected the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is false. Absolutely false. There's wait, nothing. Wait, wait, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no. Oh, 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 I, I, oh, let me finish first. Bro. Let me finish. Let me finish. And, you, and to God. prove that, pr to prove that, Notice what he says here in the letter. They, he brushed over it real fast. But, but watch this. Since we have heard that some who went out from us troubled you. Now, how can the law of God that they should be keeping for righteousness trouble you? And not only did he say that, he says unsettling your souls. KJV said subverting your souls. Then he went on to say, we gave no such commandment. We didn't tell these brothers to come and that word subvert has reference to overturning your faith. So how are they overturning their faith by taking them back to the law? How can you unsettle somebody's soul by preaching the law that they would eventually learn? Cut it out. They would, what they should have put in the letter is, Hey, these brothers were right for telling y'all that, but, but we going to scoot string y'all along a little bit. You know, you just learn one at a time. And, and point number Whoa. <laughs> the if they were going to give the Gentiles a starter pack of the law, wouldn't you start with thou shall love the Lord thy God and him only shall you serve? Come on, man. The starter pack got to do with what they eat. Come on, cut it out. Cut it out. None of that's in this text. Verse 21 doesn't say that. That's an importation by those of the Hebrew Roots movement, and it is not biblical. Not biblical at all. All right, brother Mike, brother Mike, are you done with this? I just got one no. question. So, are you saying that this is all they have to keep? Is the uh, verse 20? No, no, listen, listen, the listen, absolutely not. You want to know why this isn't all they have to keep? Because the apostles continue to write letters, right? We can go right over, watch this. This is gonna, this gonna bless somebody, 
right? We can go right over to uh, uh, Galatians chapter number five. And he says, walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another. Now, watch verse 18. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, check this out. So now he's teaching them how to live here. And he gives 17 different works of the flesh. I won't read them all for time's sake. So, so no, they weren't giving a, see, this is the problem. Mike, Mike, that is oh, so no. biased. Mike, no, that's stop biased. It, stop I thought it. you loved me. Let me finish. I thought Girl. you loved me, Mike. Girl, you know I love you. That, I just love you enough to tell that, you. That, 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 that's <laughs> why I'm trying Mike, to help Mike, you. That's I said, why I'm, hold it, hold I said hold it's hold a starter it. pack. And you're, you're saying the same thing as me. It is a starter pack. Because no, it's not cool. a starter pack. No, no. It was given wow. so that Gentiles, remember, these Jews that were in the synagogue when the law of Moses is being read every Sabbath, all, most of them are not believers in Yeshua. So therefore, in order to maintain peace. Mike, can you prove that? Give me the bro. book chapter verse that says most of the leaders in Israel which are the Pharisees, chief priests, and rulers were not believers. Give me a book, chapter, verse. Bro, okay, okay, hold on. You are uh, first, first before the I crowd got Jesus hold killed. On. Those oh, were the oh, leaders oh. that were behind the sedition. Oh, they were behind oh. the overthrow. That's Hell, right. Who, it was who behind the okay. Are you trying to tell me the whole mother? Right. Are you trying to him? Him? We yeah. were viral, but Deke, give us the Deke, other one. Deke, are you trying to tell me that most of the religious <laughs> leaders in Israel were believers of Yeshua? <laughs> Are you, are you really let you really want us to embrace that? Let me let me listen. Since I I just called your bluff, Mike. I said, give me book chapter verse. You start tap dancing. I'm, no, like, I, no, like, I, no, I'm gonna I'm I'm give it to you. I, hey, bro, let me, stop let me it. Now, it. I, I I don't dance when I don't hear music, and you, and you can't sing with this doctor. <laughs> let me prove it. Let me. Come, let, just, let me show you. He said he want to prove it, but I haven't even answered your question. He needs to prove the 15 part. The Acts 15. Deacon got a Deacon got to clear up Acts 15. You listen. Eric, I, gave, I gave my I gave my exegesis. I can't. I wrote I, the verses. He said, "All right, I get. All right, go ahead. No, go ahead. Hit his part, never, Deacon. I got to move on with Elder Wiggins. Go okay, ahead, I, let Deacon. I, I, don't say nothing, Mike. Let Deacon talk. Deacon I got you. Talk. I got you. All praises. So when you when you read, he said that most of the leadership in Israel rejected Christ. Right? We just read Acts twenty one where it says thousands of Jews believed, and then you guys said, "Oh, they killed Christ." Let's look. Take a look at High Priest Caiaphas, John chapter eleven. John chapter oh 11. God. Let's see why they killed Christ. John chapter 11. And we I know would, why they killed Christ. I would why why they kill him? Because it was prophesied that one must die for the sins oh, of the people. Okay, so don't act like I'm, they I'm killed not him. new to this. But, okay. but guess Mike, what? Mike, Mike, Mike. Just, wasn't a believer. No, no, no. But Mike, Mike, Mike yeah, listen, yes, yes. listen <laughs> and you have to correct your cohorts <laughs> because they tried to make that an argument that because we put him to death. We didn't love or we hated him or didn't believe in him. Look what it says. John 11 and 49. One of them named Caiaphas being high priest that year said unto them, ye know nothing at all. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that Which whole nation perish not. Look Which is what exactly what I said. Is that is that not him believing? Verse 51. No, this no, is not. Him, so he he didn't believe in the man, but he wanted to. To, to give him up to be crucified so that we as a nation could be saved. Okay, let me finish. Deacon, no, no, no. Let me, no, 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 no. Deacon, hold on, hold on Mike. Deacon, the, you, Deacon, you believe the majority of the Pharisees love Jesus? Let me prove this by Wait a minute. I got to figure You're trying to prove that? Let me respond John, to this verse that he just let, read, though. Let me wow. finish this. Let me okay, finish go this. Ahead. 51, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. And not only for that nation, but also he gathered together and won the children of God scattered abroad. So, prophesied he prophesied that jesus should die so you're telling me this man prophesied in the spirit that jesus should die but didn't believe on him yeah, i'm that's exactly what i'm telling you let me tell you why because god sovereignly can speak through whoever he wants. he spoke through a mew in the old testament so come on here god can speak through whoever he wants, and he used caiaphas due to his position and he used him to prophesy but this man was one of the main ones who led to the crucifixion of jesus christ as a matter of fact watch this let me prove that to you let me let me prove that to you Mike, Mike, hold, on, reading, hold on hold on hold on no let me not no, no, let me hold it to a scripture that I, we can read right here in the context Bro, how does he say no, he wants I'm gonna show you. To be he, he does this out like, i promise Deep, you give me, let me give me eight no, seconds no, no. give me eight Deep. seconds Deep. how can somebody say I want the, this person is going to save us, but not believe. 
Come on, that don't Bro, make sense. It, Go ahead. It don't make sense because you got to understand the culture of the nation. Now, here's yeah. Psalms 2. Watch this. I'm going to show you this. Here's Psalms 2 where it says, Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel against the Lord and his anointed. Now, why is this important? Right? This is important because this is also quoted in the book of Acts. Right. And, and it's talking about Pilate and all of those who crucified him. No, Caiaphas did not accept Jesus the Christ. They were. And, and let me and let me let me go to one more verse here just to prove this. Just to prove this one more time. Let's go to Acts chapter four real quick. Right. End of the chapter. Watch this. Uh, watch this. Watch this. Oh, I'm sorry. Acts chapter three. End of the chapter. Right. Watch this. He's prophesying to them and watch this. Hold it, hold it, hold it. In verse 19, he starts off by telling them to repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out that uh, uh, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who has preached to you before, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his prophets. And one last verse, I, I just wanted to show you that prophecy, but here's the proving. John chapter one, this is this is this right here is gonna be the icing on the cake. He came to his own, and what happened? His own, his own, received him not, but to received him not. Received the Jews all. rejected Christ, bro, and they rejected him as a whole. Book. That's all go the book. Matthew talks okay. about how often would I have gathered you under my wings, Jerusalem, but you were not willing. <laughs> that you, all day long have I stretched out my hands to a rebellious nation, right? But you were not willing to come that you might be healed. Yes, the Israelites rejected Christ, brother. Okay, Mike, then why doesn't Acts 21, it says there are thousands and thousands of Jews that believe. Be that listen, believe what? What does it the say? Book, believe what? In the book of in Acts, listen. But, in now, now, but can, I, can, I, can I just say something about that text? Jews just were coming into saving faith in the book of Acts, but right? Said because they, of said the book. him as a whole. Now, brother, they didn't believe in, they believed from the preaching of the apostle, you conflating. We're, you're talking about two things. We're talking about them rejecting Christ, which ultimately led to his crucifixion versus what happened after he rose and the apostles went out okay. and preached to them. And in Acts chapter two, how many souls got saved? 2,000, okay. next chapter, 3,000. Gotcha. I got you, I got you. So what you're saying is, is that while he was on earth, they rejected him, but afterwards they started accepting him. Many started accepting him through okay. by virtue of the preaching so, of the gospel. John chapter 12, verse 19. Watch this. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, perceive ye how ye prevail nothing. Behold, the world is gone after him. What are they saying here? They're, they're saying that many people are following him. But this was before they all, them same folks that went after him, said crucify him. It wasn't the leaders. The same was the beat John. Yeah. Come on, there man. wasn't the Pharisees. So he, the Pharisees controlled the temple. But it Mike the said, Pharisees hated him. But yeah, Mike said the Jews. Mike, here's what Mike said, you guys. I want you guys to be clear what he said. He said yep. that before Acts, they reject him. I just showed that there were so many people following him and believing on him. They said it was the world going after him. Now, Mike, here's the point, though. You said, but, why but are you saying the world is the Israelites? Are you implying that the world there? Because it seemed like you're trying to slide that in there. Well, the world, world refers is, to the Israelites. He's saying, or use the same way the world is referring to the world. How are you well, using this, that one? This world is referring to the Israelites because they're following Jesus throughout the mountains and hills. See what I'm saying? Wait, so, wait, hold, so, on, hold, so, on. hold <laughs> on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick. Now I got to get on this guy. Are you telling me this oh, means the whole inhabited earth when Jesus didn't even leave? <laughs> this? No, no, well, but this, yeah, because but this verse means now, Mike, Mike, check you got to check your boy. You're the most studied, person yeah, yeah, because the, the woman that he called the dog wasn't an Israelite, she had heard of him, right. Okay, she wasn't is right. Came desiring to see him. <laughs> right. The, the, the minority. Listen, contextually. The minority in. So, Mike, exegete the scripture. I'm, for I'm me. about to answer. Go ahead. Right? Contextually. All right, we're getting we get ready to put both of them out of here. <laughs> contextually, <laughs> he's dealing. He contextually. It is it is a, 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 a anthropomorphic statement. The, it's almost like we say, man, everybody following him. They, they don't necessarily mean every single person, but they're 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 used. It's an anthropomorphic statement, right? Jesus hadn't been. Jesus never preached in his earthly ministry in Africa and America. You know what I mean? So so surely 
in that verse, he wasn't talking about the people who may have inhabited America. He was talking about the people in their inhabited areas. Thank so you. I don't. Right. Thank you. Okay, Thank I you. don't have a problem with that. Right. But here's Thank the you. here's the point though. The, the but Pharisees, you can't say that it only applies to Israel. I think that's what he's trying to say because they well, they have this doctrine that God so yeah. loved the world, which is referring to only Israel. That's how he's trying to go yeah. with that. I mean, right. now that's I mean, a different subject, but it, it yeah, I get you. Israel, right. Because he said he hates uh, all Edomites, so it, it would have to well, be Israel. Edom, even if, you, even if you so, so with that, so with that, so with that, so with that, elder, with that, uh, elder Mike, he can beat you by saying the world there who received him, who received Christ, the world is Israel. So then that's no. when you turn around and say, you, you see what I'm saying? When you turn around no, and no, say no, that Congress most of the leaders. In, if right. We gotta be, if okay. we're gonna have biblical integrity, right? Then we gotta we That's gotta right. allow the context to determine. Yeah, now, now, in John chapter three is a different subject. Now we can talk about that, and we can go read John three, but okay. I don't want to go there because okay, that's well, not where we at. Point, my whole point, Mike, whether this world means uh, a lot of Israelites, and because we predominate, we were the pro dominant people in our land, and in a few heathens. Okay, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying that it was a gang of people following him and believing on him. That's all I'm saying. Now, Mike. I bring this up to say when I went to Acts, the thousands of Jews, when I went to uh, when you read Acts 15, it says a, sec a certain sex of the Pharisees. When you read Acts chapter six, verse seven, it says, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. So when you say things like in Acts 21, when uh, yeah, Acts 15, verse 21, when it says, oh, why would they go to the synagogue? Those Pharisees didn't believe. Well, let's just entertain your argument that they didn't believe until Acts. In Acts, they were believing, listen. and they were in charge of the synagogues. No, so no, I, listen. I there were leave, some. I didn't I say leave, all. I want to leave. I off said this. some. Number one. Can you please? Can you okay. please exegete Deuteronomy thirty verse one to seven? I promise you guys watching in the chat, he ain't gonna do it. Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! Come on. The floor see, is yours. Be that. The hold floor on. is well, hold yours. Hold on. I got you. Said Deuteronomy thirty. I got 30. you. I got you. I'll go there. But let me just clear up what you said here. Now, remember, when they came to arrest Jesus, then Jesus answered and said to them, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching uh, uh, and you did not seize me. Right. All had gone after him. Right. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Watch this. What's this say? Then all forsook him and fled. So let's be clear that Israel as a nation, they rejected Christ. That That's a fact. That's 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 consequential to the gospel. Okay, right? But, but, but let Mike, me go to your Deuteronomy. Mike, see, every time you say something. <laughs> no, you want me? No, you said it first. I just okay, had to clear last, it up. Last, okay. Come on, man. Eight, eight seconds. Eight seconds. If oh, they rejected Lord, him. So who's the new covenant for, Mike? The new covenant is for all the seed of Abraham. All the seed of Abraham, but a lot of people don't. Okay, so the 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 Bible says the new covenant for the house of Israel, house of Judah, right? You're gonna say that more people can be attached oh. to it. Okay, fine, whatever. Now, if if the new covenant is for the house of Israel and the house, how can the new covenant be for them if they rejected him? Bro, not every single individual rejected. The apostles were Jews, right? Okay, okay. So, so not all Israelites rejected it, okay. and so it did. The it, Acts chapter number twenty. The, Couple thousand folks that got saved. These were primarily Israelites. There were some proselytes there as well. I'll take that answer. I'll take that answer. So do not right. 30. All right. What verse? Uh let's start at verse one. Oh, pray. God answers one prayers, th man. Oh, yeah. If I'm gonna go viral, I'm gonna give you something to go viral for. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, so start at verse one to what? I'm gonna just read Get him, Elder Mike. Get him. Seven, one to seven. I got you. Now, now it shall come to pass when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God drives you and you return to the Lord. I want you to keep this in mind. Verse two is important. Return to the Lord your God and obey his voice according to all that I command you today. You and your children with all your heart and with all your soul. Now, Mike, the, Mike, Mike, has this happened yet? Hold it. You let me get through it. Let me get that. Let me get okay. through it. Okay. It's all right. I got an answer for you. All right. Verse three: that the Lord your God will bring you back from captivity and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where the Lord your God has scattered you. If any of you are driven out to the farthest parts under heaven, from there the Lord will, God will gather you 
and from there he will bring you. Then the Lord your God will bring you to the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it. He will prosper you and, and multiply you more than your fathers, and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, that you may live. All right? Verse seven. That, verse seven. Okay. Also, the Lord your God will put all these curses on your enemies and those that, who hate you, who persecute you. That cool. Or verse eight too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, you, and your question is: Has this happened? Mm -hmm. This is happening, right? And let me show you. It's happening. It's mm -hmm. happening. It's it's what we call in theological terms. The already, already not yet. Not yet. Now, you've been watching my video. <laughs> oh my god! No, I, I've never heard you. I've never heard you say that. I've never uh, heard you say that. I'm messing with so you. I'm messing with you. Hold on. Let me let me show you in the book, Doc. I got to, I got to prove yeah, my case ahead. with go the ahead. book, Doc. Watch this, Doc. Hebrews chapter number twelve. Right. Let's check this out. Note. So it's happening, and it's happening. There is a uh, inauguration of of the uh, new kingdom that has happened through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But the ultimate consummation will happen when the Lord finally returns physically and bodily. But check this out in Hebrews. Watch this. Hebrews twelve verse eighteen. It says, "You have not come to the mountain that may be touched, and that burn with fire." into blackness and darkness and tempest. He's referring them back to the mountain they were in, uh, in the land, in the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, so that those who heard it begged the words should not be spoken to them anymore, for they could not endure that what, what was commanded. I want you to let that resonate in your spirit, but they could not endure what was commanded. And if so much as a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceeding afraid and trembling. Verse 22, but you have come to Mount Zion. I want you to catch this. So, so there is there is a gathering happening in the present tense. You have come. And in Greek, this is the, the active present indicative. This is something taking place currently, right? Mm -hmm. You have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to a numerable company of angels, to the general assembly of the uh, and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the what? New covenant, because I know some of y'all don't think we in that yet, and to the blood of sprinkling Reflection. that speaks better things than that of Abel. So absolutely, there's one more verse I'm going to take you to real quick. Um, Real quick. Hey, y'all see how Mike bringing his social media beef over here? I'm, I'm sorry, Brian. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I love you, Brian. <laughs> One more verse here. Watch this. Watch this here. This because this gonna bless somebody who's who's waiting on the kernel when God is trying to elevate us to the to, to the to the spiritual, right? Hebrews chapter number thirteen, verse number fourteen says this: For here, and, and you, where were they? Oh, Lord have mercy. Yeah, I, I'll let you check that out. Where were they when the he who is the Hebrew writer writing to the Hebrews? And where were they? This was before AD 70, before the destruction of the temple, before Judah was expelled through the Roman uh overtake through King Titus, uh, the Roman ruler. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Right. So there is an already but not yet aspect to the scriptures. Right. The ultimate consummation will be when the Lord returns. So so is it happening? Yes. Has it happened? Yes. Will it happen? Yes. Is it going to happen? Yes. All at the same time, because in okay. Christ, All in Christ, we are saved. We shall be saved. And ultimately consummated all, in the end. All praises. Now, Mike, let me show you why that's not going to work. Let's go back to oh. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 1. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 1. All right. It shall come to pass when all these things are called upon thee, the blessing and the curse. Which curses are these? The blessing and the curse, right? He's Deuteronomy he's 28, about, right? Right. Okay. Oh. Which I have said before thee. Who's the thee here? He's talking specifically to the Israelites to the in Israelite. this context. And thou shalt yeah. call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy God have driven thee. And uh -huh. thou shalt return unto the Lord thy God. So while the Israelites are scattered among all nations, they're going to return to the Lord, right? Yeah. Okay. And shall obey his voice and according to all that I command thee this day. 
Is this the mm -hmm. Mosaic law that he's commanding them to do this day? Right. No, he said, according to uh, all that I command you this day. And right. hold on one second. You can go ahead. I got I to gotta handle something real quick. Go ahead. I'm going to wait for you. He ain't running this time. All right, go ahead, Ella Wiggins. I'm trying to I'm trying to straighten this thing out. We're gonna get him a couple of more minutes and we're gonna get rid of them. But hold on, hold on, let me bring another brother on too. Go ahead, go to um Wiggins. Where he at? He well, well, I'm de well, well, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can. I'm just I, I got I just got the headphones okay. off. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm definitely with what Elder Mike is saying as it relates to you know what's happening right now. I mean, when we look at Deuteronomy chapter 30. God is basically telling the Israelites that they will have to talk about what happened to them while, you know, the blessings and the curse. And my, Elder Mike made a pivoting point on, uh, I think it was verse two. Um, I didn't look at it, but yeah, I think it was verse two. And it says, and, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Here it is, my Hebrew brother, and think that it's referring to the law. Okay. Notice it keeps saying the commandment, but we're going to insert the law. But uh, uh, the commandment, let me read it again. And shalt return unto the Lord thy God and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children with all thy heart, with all thy soul. Jesus Christ came preaching that. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. That's what Jesus Christ came preaching. Well, Elder Wiggins, That's what it, Elder Wiggins just, just to make sure uh, I'm walking with you. In verse 2 when it says, and shalt thou obey all his voice, his voice. Who's the his here? Jesus. Huh? Jesus. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Jesus, because we got to go back. To, we got to go back to Deuteronomy 20. You got to go back to Deuteronomy 18. And I will put all my words in his mouth. And okay. remember Jesus Christ. Right. OK, go on. When it says, when it says, and shall obey all his voice, this is Jesus, according to all that I command thee this day. It's a present day, though. Yeah, but that's what the that's what the whole message was. You remember that prophecy? Mm -hmm. Let's go take a look at it in Deuteronomy 18. Because this this prophet is what Moses was saying that God was going to raise up from amongst them, and he was going to put his words in his mouth. So that's this is what we're talking about. Wait, we're looking at Jesus. Are you, are you on my <laughs> Facebook team? <laughs> Yeah, I'm on your Facebook too, bro. We friends. <laughs> we talked. We talked. We talked before, huh? That's right. That's right. How, that's how right, you doing, brother. How you doing? I'm doing good, brother. How are you, man? It's a pleasure to talk to you again. I would have knew it was you. We got some history too. <laughs> we got some history too. But all praise to the Most High, man. I ain't got no. Listen, I ain't got. I want to let the chat know because I know sometimes. My bad. People, you know, they have a disdain towards towards the Hebrew Israelites of one West persuasion. Look, I'm gonna let you guys know, man, I got some brothers who are in Christianity who I still love and I'm at peace with. So it ain't no love loss here. This is not personal. It's just my father's business. So Mike, okay. <laughs> this, let me conclude this. Cause I, I, I literally have to be gone in 14 minutes hey. here. And uh, we all might come over there. Now I'm just playing. Go ahead. <laughs> now, look, verse two, verse two, I want to see if you share this same uh, understanding. So we agreed that this time about ethnic Israel and they're going to be scattered. The blessing and the curses talking about Deuteronomy 28 and shall do all uh, obey his voice. Who's the his here? God. God. OK, got you. Okay, according to all that I command thee this day, that present day, he's prescribing Mosaic law, right? He's not only remember, he's prescribing Mosaic laws, yes, but he's also prescribing the one who will come after him to True. hear. So True. you can't you can't you can't exclude one from the other. Well, Mike, Mike, I agree with you because people will say uh, that Christ is not in the law. He is in the law. Deuteronomy 18 and 18. So I'll agree with you there. So it says thou and thy children with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. Who's the thy here? That in context in Deuteronomy, talking about the Israelites. Israelites. They will be in captivity when this happens. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So whoever the Israelites are today, this hasn't happened yet. And it's uh, 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 
what you would call carnal fulfillment. So would you agree that the Israelites will be in captivity upon the arrival of Christ? See, so the answer is absolutely yes, but you got to understand something. They were in captivity at the arrival of Christ. And so what Christ did, remember, what's, what was revealed in the law in Deuteronomy, uh, Paul made clear and the rest of the apostles mm -hmm. made clear that there was information. Even Peter said that the prophets diligently searched about this salvation concerning us. So there were things that they weren't able to speak to because those things weren't revealed yet. It's called progressive revelation. And so we got to take the whole council. I'm agreeing with you in premise, but not in practice. You got to, you got to understand the fulfillment of what Moses is writing in light of all the additional information that we have throughout history, including the writings of the new Testament. So, mm -hmm. Absolutely. so, so all that becomes vitally important. So well, yes. in what you're saying, because you're, you're, you're keeping it real, you know, uh, you know, straightforward. The answer is so yes, fair. but that's how so are, fair. how is he gathering us together? Right. Wait, and all of that, us. all that plays. Yeah, you, you said us, this isn't yeah. talking about you here. What, what what do you mean? It's not talking about me. Because he's you said this is talking about ethnic Israel. I thought I was an Israel. No, I'm just playing. No, no, no. Oh, but remember, oh, oh, the reason oh, oh. I just I'm just I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. The reason oh. I can say us, the reason I can say wow. that's listen, that's gonna be a sound bite. All the Israelites are gonna be playing from here on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. No, but, hold on, let me let me say it real quick. The reason I can say us though, bro, is because of the progressive revelation, because we understand that all who are of faith are seed of Abraham. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm not saying us in the context of Deuteronomy. I'm saying us in the context of the greater revelation gotcha. that came after Deuteronomy. Got you, got you, got you, got you. So we're not gonna um but it's clear that I mean you know God's people will be in captivity when this is fulfilled and we know his words don't go out and come back void. Now there are some prophecies that have um parabolic or esoteric meanings but we see the vivid description here is, is very clear because look what it says. Now, Mike, this is a problem though for you. Before I continue, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. I'll try to get through this quick. It's saying that these Israelites are going to be among all nations. For them to be scattered means they're under the curse because it says the curse right here. And they're going to return and they're going to have to believe on the Messiah and keep the commandments that he's commanding them that day. But you said that, you know what? I, I'll, I'll that's another time let's just keep going because that might turn to and return and gather thee from all nations whither the lord thy god has scattered thee so he's going to gather the israelites right and now i'm not saying to the exclusion of a gentile because that's a different argument i'm just focusing on now, the heat right so so he's going but remember because <clears throat> jesus looked some israelites dead in the eye in john chapter number eight and they said, we be of Abraham. See, <laughs> Jesus said, no, you are of your father, the devil. So I agree in the context, Israelites being gathered, but in the context of who is the true Israelite, he, uh, Ju you, you would agree with me, D that Judas not going to be gathered together in the land with the Israelite. You, why, why? He rejected Messiah. He, 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 uh, turned his back on him. And got him crucified, you know, basically lied on him, whatever, for 30 pieces of silver, sold him out. Mike, you, Mike, you would you agree, agree that, there's... that this is talking no, no. about ethnic Israel. I, I'm, not saying I, no, I'm, being... single, I'm not saying the Israelite who's fornicating and selling sherm sticks on the block. I ain't saying I that. agree that it's inclusive of every believing Israelite. Okay. However, in, like you said, we won't go there, but that would also include into that one covenant people, middle wall of partition broken down, no longer two, but one, no, in, in Christ, neither Jew nor Greek nor bond nor free, right? That So within that covenant, it is inclusive of every believing Israelite. You're absolutely right. But okay. it's also inclusive of every believing person, Gentile also, because if they place faith in Christ, they are seed of Abraham through faith. Okay. So that that's the greater revelation right. and that's that's a different argument but so so who are the enemies of the ethnic israelites you talking in deuteronomy you talking now <laughs> see because in the new covenant remember that's why progressive revelation is so important in the new covenant we're we understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers rulers of the darkness of this world spiritual wickedness in high places okay. right now culturally in the old testament okay. they understood their enemies 
in 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 terms of the all the Can the Amorites, the Amalekites, you know, Canaanites, the Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, and all the otherites. So they understood it in that way. But again, or would progressive you say, revelation, would you say, would we understand that, that that's not the case. Would you say that in the old covenant, when they said enemies, they're talking about all non-Israelite nations? I, uh, the Israelite nations who first came against and persecuted Israel, yes. Okay. So let's keep going. Verse four, if any of thine be driven out to the utmost part of heaven, from thence the Lord will gather thee and will he fetch thee. So he's still gathering the Israelites here and the Lord thy God will bring thee in the land which thy fathers possess. Is that the actual geographical locale of Israel? Okay, I got, I got, a, I got a blessing for you. Let me show you, because what land? Because, right, we got to, we got to start wrapping okay. this up. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, um, okay. Let, let me just skip here. Let me just skip here. Verse seven. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thy enemies. When is the Lord going to put the curses of Deuteronomy 28 on the Gentile nations? It well, it's happening, it's happening, and it's happening now, and it's gonna happen in the end, in, in ultimate future judgment, right? Okay. Romans chapter number one talks about the wrath of God is revealed against heaven uh, on all unrighteousness. So but, so, no, but but this isn't talking about the Israelites going into captivity again. This is talking about that it is, is captivity a part of the curses, right? It, it depends on what type of captivity you're talking about, yes. But but again, if you if you if you continue to hold uh, Old Testament narrative, you'll never understand the fullness of what the new covenant brought. But right? Mike, it's not about a narrative. It's thus saith the Lord. If he does, it is thus saith the Lord in context. A liar. No, bro, not at all. Not at all. Can Every word fail? of God is true. And a prophecy right. fail. A prophecy cannot fail. It will not fail. However, bro, okay. it may not be fulfilled in the <clears> way that you think. That's the whole thing. All right. right? Well, the Bible says he spoke plainly with Moses. It wasn't esoteric. So I, I uh, give you no esoteric knowledge. All <laughs> praise to the most high, man. Hey, Brother Berean, they've been trying to get me to come on your channel for so long, but I've been so busy. I'm glad I came over here and had a discussion with you, brothers, man. Good um, to have you, brother. I can't lie. Love I was, brother was Berean. Big and I enjoyed it, brother. I love I love yeah. Elder Wiggins and I love Mike too. Mike, you know, we was being <laughs> I love you too, brother. Up. I'll just uh I'll just take it as as this is the dialogue that the Lord gave us since time wouldn't permit us to come across each other any other time. But it's always make good. It it's always good. Y'all have a good rest of the night. All right, so, man. All right, man. Appreciate you. All right. Sorry, for hold me. on, hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on, <laughs> Mike. We're gonna stop bringing your beef over here. You gonna stop. Bringing I was enjoying it. it. I can't lie. And then you see when them camps start, start sending their people over here, you got a smooth talking one. We got oh, yeah, that, he, I that, can't that, lie, he was talking. He, man, that, he, that's, man, I had, that's why I jumped on. I seen, I yeah. said, Oh, no, I got to get in here. Oh, <laughs> and, Mike, and Mike turned around, but, but I said, we so everybody know Deacon. Yeah, Everybody I know already him. know him. You said he was oh, yeah. on Facebook. But but Wiggins, where were you at? In the cutlass looking busted, no Cadillac converter. Now I cop the Escalade, watch the Cadillac converter. All praise to you, I will buy shim, you I was shot. I'm praying these cowards die, and that's word of Malachi. Word of Malachi.